One of the most important tasks for a network engineer is to create the network topologies or the network diagrams. Uh, this is a document often used to describe how the network devices are connected. You find information such as the switch is connected on this interface and is connected to this router on this interface. And probably you have two routers, probably you have four routers. Uh, are those routers behind a firewall? Do you have a load balancer? Uh, you also have information such as the subnets. How many subnets do you have? Uh, how many subnets are allocated to network devices and also probably to other systems such as the servers. So in some diagrams, you might also find information related to servers, database, storage, and these different components that exist on the network infrastructure. Now, as a network admin, it is very important to have this document up to date because if you have any problem in the network and you have to troubleshoot, you'll be able to rely on that document to quickly uh, isolate probably the root cause that might not be actually related with a network device, but might be related with something happening on a server on a specific subnet. And you'll be able to identify this just by looking at the network diagram. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a network topology by using the same techniques that I use in production environment. Okay, to make this as realistic as possible, we'll be using this topology. And you can see we don't have much information. We only see two PCs, two clouds, and that's it. And we have to discover or figure out which devices are in this network. And to help us design the network topology or the network diagram, uh, I will be using the Draw.io. This is a free software you can download. I'll share this in the video description for you to download. If you don't want to install, there is also a web version so you can run directly on your browser. So as we discover the network devices, we're going to add them to Draw.io, okay? So we are connected to PC1 and the only information we have so far is that we have to discover the network devices using Telnet. Okay, so we are connected on PC1 and we know that they are using the subnet 10.0.1.0.0. In this case, PC1 has the IP address 10.0.1.1 and they said that we should connect to a switch that has the IP address 10.0.1.2. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to bring the CMD prompt and I'm just going to reduce this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to Telnet to 10.0.1.2. Okay, and it looks like I'm connected. Now, the first two that I'm going to use is show CDP neighbors. Show CDP neighbors, it's going to describe the directly connected devices. So because I'm connected to switch to, and by running this command is saying, okay, these are the other devices that are directly connected to switch to. And look at this, we have a device with host name switch three and is connected on interface E01, okay? And on the switch remote port is using port E01 as well. And there is another device that's R4 and is connected on switch two on port E00 and on the remote side of the device is connected also on port E00. And we also have some additional information here like the capability and this tell us a lot. So for example, for switch three, it is RSI and that stands for router switch and IGMP. As for R4, it is R and B, which means that it can be a router or a source route bridge. Okay, so let's add these two on our diagram. So I'm just going to add, uh, I don't want this one. I'm going to add this one. So this should be switch two. I'm just going to like this and I'm just going to extend this arrow and yep, that's great. Now I'm going to add another one. So that should be, so we saw that we have R4 and we have uh, switch three. 
Now I'm organizing this way because I already know the topology, but once you're discovering, you can start adjusting the way you want. I could also add the port description on this diagram, but just for the sake of time, I'm just going to leave as this. Okay, so we have switch two is directly connected to PC one to switch three and R4. Okay, so let's see if we can tell net to R4, but we don't know R4 IP address. Okay, how can we discover R4 IP address? If we run the command show CDP neighbors detail, it's going to give us a lot more detail, such as the IP address for those directly connected devices. Now you can see switch three is using the IP address 10.0.1.3, as for R4 is using the IP 10.0.1.4. Now, based on this information, we can start to make some assumptions, such as uh, switch two has the IP address 10.0.1.2, R4 has the IP address 10.0.1.4, and switch three 10.0.1.3. So probably, if we discover another device might be on the same subnet might be okay now let's log into r4 and see what else we can find out okay so i'm going to quit this and try to tell net to 10014 and i mean okay so let's run again show cdp show cdp neighbors and okay it looks like that's the end of it we only have switch two okay so r4 is only connected to switch two okay no problem so now let's go back to switch uh two or we can uh, connect directly to switch three from r4 so 10.0.1.3 we are inside switch three so let's run again show cdp neighbors and again it's only say that it's connected also to switch two so it looks like those are the only devices in this topology but let's go back to the diagram or to the initial topology we can see pc2 here it's connected somewhere now you probably know that when the device is connected to the switch they're going to advertise their mac address and the mac address will be stored on a specific port so you might want to know if we have other MAC address on a specific port of switch 3 and we can do the same for switch 2 or R4 but let's start just with switch 3 for a minute okay let's look at switch 3 MAC address table so the command is show MAC address and okay we see a lot of MAC address not too many but we see some so we see that we have MAC address on port E00 E00 that's interesting because if we go back we don't see any device connected on port E00 okay from switch 3 perspective uh, actually we have here so E00 is here okay so that's R4 uh, so switch 3 so that's the output I was looking for so we see that on switch two is connected on E01. So we have another device connected on port E00. As E01, that's where switch two is connected. We also have another MAC address on port E02. So based on this output, we can see that there are other devices in this topology, okay? Now, if we have the MAC address, probably we are able to identify if that MAC address is associated with a specific IP address. Okay, how can we find out? So let's look at ARP, IP ARP table, show IP ARP. And sure enough, we can see the IP address and the respective MAC address. In this case, we can see that on port E00, we have this MAC address, 0300. And if we look here, 0300, we have the IP address, 10.0.1.5. And look at this. We know that PC1 has the IP address 10.0.1.1. We know that Switch2 has the IP address 10.0.1.2. We know that Switch3 has the IP address 10.0.1.3. And we know that 10.014 is R4. So 
10015 that should be another device probably a network device let's try to find out so let's see if we can tell net to 10015 and we can and it says r5 that's weird so let's try to find out do we have cdp now cdp is not enabled on this device now on some devices cdp might be disabled on cisco devices by default cdp is enabled but in some case for security purposes, cdp might be disabled either globally or at the interface level in this case let's enable cdp so let's go to configuration mode and i'm going to type cdp run okay now go back to exec mode and run show cdp neighbor now if you enable cdp immediately you won't see any output so you gotta give it a couple of seconds and it's going to start to advertise and receive information from its directly connected neighbors let's run the command one more time okay and it says that is directly connected to switch three okay that's interesting it means that if i add this here that should be r5 okay that's great it looks like we have something but it's not completed yet okay so let's go back to r5 so cdp okay that's it is it possible that we have another device on the network that is not running cdp but might be running a different protocol you see cdp stands for a uh, cisco discovery protocol so it is a protocol supported on cisco devices we also have a different protocol that it's used on non-cisco devices and that's lldp so let me show you if i run the command show lldp neighbor it says that it's disabled okay so let's enable this so lldp run and we're going to give it a couple of seconds while we are waiting for lldp to start advertising receive information from any neighbor that we might see on r5 let's also see if lldp is enabled on r4 so let's tell net to 10.0.1.4 and run the command show lldp neighbor and sure enough we have a device connected here so it's saying switch to we already know we discovered that using cdp but there is a new device that's fgt that's the host name by the way and it's connected on this interface and it it is r a router and on that remote device is connected on port one so we have one additional device that is directly connected to r4 so i'm going to add here and its host name is fgt okay now can we get more detailed information about this device let's see what about if i run show lldp detail okay so we have that switch to i don't care about this so on e01 the system name fgt oh look at this this is a 40 gate that's a firewall so we now know that r4 is connected to a firewall that's 40 gate okay we want to see any ip address management address not advertised okay we know that there is a firewall and that's a 40 gate firewall so probably someone can help us with additional information as to how to log into this firewall now let's do the same check on r5 i'm just going to exit and run the command show lldp neighbor and we couldn't find anything but that's strange because if you look at this uh it doesn't make sense to have r4 directly connected to the firewall and r5 is not connected now someone might give us a hint as to how to log into this firewall so we're going to do that and take a look if we can enable lldp on this firewall or not so let's go back to browser and this is the management ip address for this firewall so i'm just going to log in and we want to make sure that we have lldp enabled on both interface or all the interfaces 
uh, that this device has. So let's go to network interfaces. So let's check port one. We know that's the one directly connected to R4. And we can see that receive LLDP, transmit LLDP is enabled. Now let's check the other interface. So that's port two. And we can see that it is disabled. Let's just enable this for a minute. Okay. Now, another thing that we can do is to look at the subnet. So this is 102. Okay. Now if you go back to R5 and run the command show IP interface brief, we can see that it has the same subnet 102. So this is just a hint. Now, if we run again the command show LLDP neighbor, okay, so R5 is directly connected to this firewall, which means that we can add, let me see if I can extend this here. Okay, and I'm just going to, okay, do this. And okay it disconnected so i'm going to do this again okay no that's not i'm just going to delete this connection and do it again okay that's better okay so we know that r4 and r5 are directly connected to this firewall now if we go back to our topology, it's missing PC2. Okay. Now, how can we find out where PC2 is connected? We actually already have this information. So if you go back uh, to switch three and if we run the command show LLDP neighbor, okay, we only see uh, R5 and switch two. We already have this information from CDP. Now, we look at the mac address table and we saw that zero zero that's where r5 is connected zero one that's where switch two is connected so which means that pc2 must be connected on e02 okay we're going to assume that and i'm just going to duplicate this and i'm going to drag that's not what i want but this can because this is RDP making this a little bit difficult for me that's not what I want I was going to copy and paste here come on okay now I'm going to drag this And let's change this to PC2 and I'm going to assume it's connected on switch 2 on switch 3 but okay that's great uh, not so good okay it's it's better now okay so this is what the topology might look like based on the information we were able to gather so far now let me remove this and just to compare if that's exactly what we have and that's it we can see that we have pc1 connected to switch 2 switch 2 is connected to pc1 r4 in switch 3 r4 is connected to firewall 1 and also switch 2 switch 3 is connected to switch 2 and r5 and pc2 and r5 is connected to firewall 1 and switch 3 now, these are the techniques that you can use to discover the devices on your network, whether they are Cisco devices, even if they're not Cisco devices, you can use the feature LLDP to discover non-Cisco devices in the network. Now, if you took value from this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and share this video with someone that might need to improve their skills on the network diagrams or network topologies. I'll see you on the next one.